Hey everyone, this is Robert. Thanks so much for checking out the video. Uh, every week at Tonko House, we paint a little still life. Uh, we thought we'd share one of those painting demos really quick. This is not a complete demo, it's a really fast one. Uh, we painted the corner sink at our studio and it was a direct light painting. Um, overall, I really want to focus on this idea of light and shadow. And you know, this paint overall, I approached as almost two values, black and white. Um, and so that's what we'll paint. It's a challenging painting. I apologize for not having a better reference. Uh, it's not quite from the same angle I painted. I forgot to take a photo. Um, but I just am going to begin this painting by blocking in abstract shapes of light and shadow that I see. Um, and not even really drawing. I'm, I'm kind of drawing what I see of the shapes, but allowing grouping to happen between uh, different objects that I'm seeing. Overall, um, again, I'm really thinking about this as black and white, that kind of light and shadow blocking in shapes that I see. Um, and you'll see, this is kind of the start. You'll see throughout the painting, the light will change. Um, some of these shapes will change. It's a constant refinement. But you can see it's largely light and shadow. Um, and so that's largely what I'm going to focus on in this video. To get a more complete um, demo and understanding of some of the things that is going on here, check out our videos on schoolism.com. You can sign up for a subscription there. Um, overall, uh, the approach to this painting is to really treat each of the objects with two values. So you can see the cups, even though overall they're darker uh, color and value, I treat them as light and shadow. Um, and so the same with the wall, same with the sink, and uh, same with the wood wall is I think about is it light in light and shadow and I kind of overall group it uh, into light and shadow. It's really important to squint in paintings uh, where you're painting direct light because it's so easy to deceive yourself with um, staring. Your brain adjusts so quickly to light and shadow that when you stare into the shadow you can overpaint and overcomplicate the values in a shadow. Um, even here, when I'm planning the, re the reflection on these jars, um, it's really important to squint to see the overall value relationship between uh, the shadow overall and the light overall, to not treat those uh, highlights too harshly. Here I also start to notice when I squint, uh, the color's a little bit off. It's a little bit dull compared to what I'm actually seeing, and don't trust that photograph. I just stuck it up for reference. But I stick an o warm overlay layer um, onto the painting just because I feel like the morning light is a lot warmer and the overall scene is actually a lot warmer with all the warm bounce light from the sunlight bouncing around. And you can see I'm starting to refine details, but overall, again, squinting at the different values and, and really seeing just the shapes. So I hope, um, you know, even when I'm painting these more complicated things, it's really important to think of uh, each of these highlights as reflections. They're each reflections of a light source or something brighter or, you know, even sometimes something darker. In the sink, I'm actually seeing the reflection of the shadow side of the wall, but I'm also seeing that bright light bounce off of the top of the hardware of the sink, and also the light source, the windows behind me are being reflected in the hardware of the sink. Um, and it's important to understand that when you're painting some of these things and not just to copy what you see, but actually to analyze um, what you're seeing so that you can paint them and represent them in a simplified way uh, accurately. Um, from here, I'm really just refining edges. I'm, I'm squinting and seeing edges. What's a cast shadow um, versus what is a sort of form shadow? And, you know, those overall light and shadow and form of an object are affected by the reflectivity of an object. So in the pipes, for instance, you can see a really bright highlight reflecting the um, light source. And, you know, the overall local color of those pipes is pretty dark, but um, uh, with the reflection, even in the shadow side, uh, that reflection gets picked up um, that you'll see me paint somewhat soon. But all of this now is kind of the fun part, just knocking in details, the construction of the sink, some uh, contact shadows, uh, and here you see the painting of the reflection of the light source, which is the windows behind me. 
uh, in that pipe and then just refining those the contact edge of that wall back there um, and then again squinting and I, I'm, I'm really feeling like I got too much into light and shadow separately and now I'm adjusting the overall value and color of the light in in respect to the uh, shadow um, So overall, again, this is a quick demo. Um, I apologize for not covering more, but if you are interested and you want to hear more about uh, some of these painting in direct light, um, exposure as an idea, which is the contrast between light and shadow, uh, check out our Schoolism course. We cover completely uh, direct light, how bounce light works. Um, which is also some of what you're seeing here, a lot of bounce light from the direct light that's hitting the wall and the floor below. Um, and then, you know, here I'm just really painting the pattern onto the uh, towel, and that's about it. I'm going to do a quick adjustment with an overlay layer um, to adjust the overall contrast and push it a little bit further, again, the darks and the lights. Um, and then that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks so much, everybody who is taking our course and been posting in the Facebook um, event forum. We're checking stuff out. We really want to do more review videos. We'll get to those soon. In the meantime, I uh, wanted to share this quick demo with you guys. Thanks so much, everyone. Uh, hope you're all great, and we'll talk soon. Bye. <laughs>